This is another key vista, this time showing the core. It's a visual payoff for the player's success in getting here, and, simultaneously, a way to present the player with a view of the next challenge. Creating a believable, interesting relationship between Gordon and Alex is made a lot tougher by the fact that Gordon never talks. This elevator scene presented a nice little opportunity to have Alex express some emotion in a situation where Gordon isn't really in a position to respond. The core design posed a lot of difficult challenges. Generally speaking, if the gameplay in a particular map isn't working, we can simply cut the entire area. This wasn't true of the core, because we knew it was critical to the story. On top of that, designing Citadel gameplay is often a bigger challenge than working out areas in City 17, largely because Citadel levels have a narrow set of gameplay tools, there are less enemy types available, and the player is usually only armed with the gravity gun. Because of this, we had to go through many iterations of the core design. One of the earlier prototypes was a kind of futuristic version of operation where players had to use the gravity gun to cleanly manipulate rods into slots in the core. That didn't work, partly because playtesters found that their view was obstructed by the rods, which made it frustratingly difficult to manipulate them with any kind of precision. We prototyped, playtested, and abandoned several other designs until we finally arrived at one that was fun, while still being challenging enough to give players the sense that they'd accomplished a significant goal. The difference between skill levels isn't just a matter of damage dealt and received. For instance, in easy mode, we increase the length of time a combine ball survives before exploding, putting less pressure on the player to get the ball into a socket. The ball tubes are an example of us working within our available toolkit to create a puzzle around a recognized concept. As a physical navigation puzzle, it's different from what the player has experienced before, and it's challenging while not being a binary succeed or fail situation. There are a number of ways to approach this puzzle. In addition to simply dodging, jumping, or ducking the balls, the player can grab or deflect them with his gravity gun, or pick up the hatch and use it as a shield to block the incoming barrage. The Combine Core was another new space that needed to stand out from the rest of the environment. We wanted the core to look hot and dangerous, but still be distinct from the fires and the cool blues of the rest of the Citadel. The core became the primary light source in this space, and in conjunction with the white set of combine materials, we created an extreme contrast to the normally dark values of the Citadel metals. The core sphere was one of the last special effects that we finished. To achieve this effect, the core uses animated textures, flow maps, normal map refraction and specularity, as well as volumetric particulate matter rendering, which takes advantage of the core being a sphere. The higher contrast white combine motif of the core sets it apart from the rest of the citadel and heightens its importance within the visual style of combine aesthetics. It also helps enhance the perception of heat and radiation in the space. The core was a central element of this part of the game and, as much as possible, we wanted to constantly reinforce its importance. Zigzagging through the space in three dimensions while navigating a variety of challenges let us present a few different visual and gameplay perspectives on the same space. By letting the player see the core from a bunch of different angles, we were able to give them a real sense of its scale. The second ball tube presents a variation of the pattern the player learned in the first ball tube. While the first tube can be crossed slowly by crouching and maneuvering your way up, the second ratchets up the pace requiring a quicker, more responsive approach. The goal of this logic puzzle isn't figuring out that you need to put balls in batteries. It's coming to the realization that, by filling all of them, you've denied yourself an exit, and that you have to de-socket one, climb on the lift, and then re-socket it. Sparks guide the player to the source of the balls, which happens to be the tube they just passed through. Monitor scenes, such as this video transmission from Dr. Mossman, aren't simply pre-rendered video. These scenes actually unfold live in an inaccessible section of the map while being projected onto the monitor screen. Here's Dr. Mossman in the small Arctic base set. It's not nearly as far away from the Citadel's core control room as it appears to be in the level. Usually, the second step of our training arcs involve a threatening training area. This is the second step in the roller mine training, and true to form, there's a threat. The indestructible roller mines endlessly attack the player in a gated space. The only way to defeat them is to have Alex convert them, which means there's no way the player can miss the point of the training. 
Players also like to see the AI characters fight each other. Sref, 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 the player about Alex's roller mine hacking talent, we let you sick them on a pack of combine soldiers. Much the same way that movie effects often utilize different versions of the same model, I don't know what's there are actually three trains made. that make They're up the stalker scene. Having it. The first one you know, all is the moving train you see arrive at the platform. The one you're in right now is a static interior it's with lights moving car. outside of it to give the illusion of motion. The third train is the crash Damn, version. Come by. It's a tilted, banged up, and totally this separate area from the moving to you version. If you resist. The transition from moving to crashed is disguised by a brief fade to black. Alex's reaction to the stalkers went through a number of iterations. In very early versions, Alex was frightened by the stalkers. That didn't work because it didn't fit with Alex's earlier reactions to stalkers in the Citadel. We changed it so that she expressed anger at the stalkers' predicament. Early versions of this new direction failed because Alex's transition from generally upbeat to blind rage was simply too abrupt. Ultimately, through rewrites and rigorous testing, we found the right tone for the scene, a simmering anger level that was more in tune with the situation. We wanted the crash train car to be very disoriented. In early tests though, players felt that it was too confusing and too hard to navigate. That feedback prompted us to turn it down a bit. By rearranging some of the geometry, we were able to create a banged up, tilted environment that still offered a relatively unobstructed path to Alex. Help me. 